Welcome back, guys, to Grand Blue Fantasy Relink, where with an absolute crazy ton of grinding done since my last session, it's been six days since my last session, and I've reached, uh, I think it's 100 hours playtime? Yeah, 105 out of grinding for curios to try and get good stuff and not getting anything at all. At least I've got a load of mastery points. At least I've got money now. At least I've been like leveling up and grinding up my people to have a significant amount of power. 17k. Lancelot's joined the fold because he freezes people for a period of time like Eugen does and I like that. So yeah, we've got people of different elements. The captain's been banished from the land. But we're here today to start with uh, a treasure chest. The Damascus Inga in it. Quick cooldown, improved dodge and a new trophy. Compulsive chest opener. Yes, that is what I am. Because we're going to start with Fate Episodes, and since last time as well, I have made sure to go online and get my Gold Dahlia badges on top of other things. I have been rolling so many different systems in this game, like sigils, like I've got 44 trans marvels on the go at the moment, but I've got so many materials off of things that I could just make so many trans marvels at this point. It's kind of ridiculous. Unbelievable! Unbelievable. In fact, I've done it too much because now I've got everyone's awakening sigil at this point in time. So whoever we awaken next will be there. But we need to go to trade Dahlia badges because, of course, we need to get one of the crewmate cards that we're missing from here. So let's grab it. I just want one. But now we have all the crewmate cards we could possibly ever need. I don't really need knick-knack vouchers for them. Supposedly I've got 140 Mirage munitions on me. And as you'll note, there's a change of weapon on my back. I have been progressing on the awakening of this, but we will do that once we start questing. First we see Silio Okate. And we choose a new friend to meet. Siegfried Gandagoza Namea. Those are the three we have left. Should we go with the last of the knightly guys and get them all together? Integrity we have. Siegfried, exceptional knight with a calm demeanor. After falling victim to a court conspiracy, he fled his country and became a tragic hero. True strength is found in camaraderie. We don't need to practice. We'll throw ourselves straight into the Fate episodes as we do. The crew is going places. New trophy for that. Aggressive sword arm, duty bound knight, veil armlet. Just get so many. All right, with all of these done, let's check our next story. With the blood of a dragon coursing through his veins, this knight brandishes a mighty sword as a man would a stick. At one time, he found himself victim of a court conspiracy, causing him to flee his country and become a tragic hero. Despite this, he is still loyal to the kingdom to this day and is admired by many. So he's kind of like that Dark Knight-ish kind of stereotype a little bit? Or archetype? Let's start. Prologue, the Devoted Knight. I can no longer recall when I first met the captain. All I can say is our paths crossed in dark times, when nights were sleepless and the wind whispered with insidious intent. Fiendrock, my homeland, was crumbling from within, consumed by the weakness of her own people. I ventured abroad to seek help from our neighbors, but this rendered me blind to schemes hatched in the heart of our court. When I returned, the adders sprung. And I found myself falsely convicted of regicide. Disgraced, I fled the kingdom and wandered for a while in the pathless wild. Perhaps I would still be there, slowly fading into the shadow, had the crew of the Grand Cipher not come for me. The captain never once doubted my innocence, led me back to Fiendrock, and cleared my name. My honor was restored. Thus concluded the greater part of my tale. But the Grand Cipher's myth was just beginning. I joined the crew to see this story unfurl. Our journey, like all great journeys, has passed through both sorrow and joy. We have traversed the wilds, crossed kingdoms forgotten, 
and met all sorts of folk. I've always found the meeting of people to be miraculous. Throughout the course of history and on into the future, there have been and will be at least as many people as stars in the sky. For any two souls to come together is as wondrous as looking up into the night and seeing your image set against the velvet and winking lights. I do not know if it was fate that brought me and the captain together, but I do know I will never meet such a person again. I intend to sail with the crew to whatever end, even to the bottom of the skies. Is there a bottom? Episode 1, A True Patriot. Of course, if you really want to know about these characters, you gotta get the gacha! I wonder if you can still play through every story chapter of the gacha or not. Probably still works with a progression like that, but of course games get updated over time to have different forms of progression or skip progression. In my youth, I was vain and headstrong. I shunned the company of others, hurting all who came near me. If I had continued on that path, it's likely I would have died alone, with no one to mourn my loss. But that was not to be. I was discovered by Yosef, the former king of Fiendrock, found quite literally by the side of the road. Though at that time, I slew monsters solely out of malice. His Majesty looked at my blade and saw what took life could also save it. He knighted me, and under his guidance, I learned about honor and friendship. I found meaning in existence. But in our world, love is inextricable from grief. New friends and brothers were lost. People that I trusted turned upon me. Loyalty had imbued me with pride. But now, it taught me desperation. Once this desperation drove me to drink the blood of a dragon. This isn't to say that I regret becoming a knight. Lancelot, Vane, Percival, the friendship of those three alone is worth any price. I learned the greatest lesson of all from them, that no matter how much is lost, we may always find hope in younger generations. They are what we must fight to defend. They are our purpose. And to think all this was set into motion by a single meeting on the side of the road. As I grow older, it becomes clear how much I owe to King Yosef. But I shall never be able to thank him in person again. That is why I swore to repay him in the only way I know how by dedicating what is left of my life to the future of his country. Episode 2, The King's Man I know King Yosef would not want me to grieve overly much for him, but he turned me from a vagabond and to the captain of the Black Dragon Knights. Under his rule, the base were ennobled, tall towers were raised, and withered fields burst forth into color. He might have done much more, had traitorous hands not cut his life short. The royal consul Isabella, covetous of his power, killed the king and smeared the guilt of it on me. Unable to prove my innocence, I was forced to flee the capital. For weeks, I was hunted by soldiers I had trained by my own hand. Lancelot, foremost among them. My name was now reviled, scrubbed like a stain from the halls of honor. But this caused me little pain, for I never hungered after fame or titles. I served the crown because I loved my country, the same reason for which King Yosef wore it. 
even as his body was broken and he lay on the threshold of death. He called only for the mending of Fiendrock. I would not let our home waste away under the shadow of Isabella's ambition. I returned to the marches where I dwelled in secret, gathering information. I worked alone, and even Lancelot was kept from my counsels. I did not tell him of my innocence, nor why I sought to cut out the now festering heart of our court. My silence was not due to a lack of trust. It would have been impossible for me to reach Lancelot unseen. Any attempt at communication would likely have ended with my arrest. But even had there been a clear path to Lancelot, I would have kept to myself. Lancelot was, and is, still young, and young minds are easily molded. If I was to leave the protection of the kingdom to him, I needed to be sure that he was more than just clay, that he had an uncorruptible, ironclad core. I needed to be sure he was not the type to blindly follow orders or emotions. He wavered, as we all do, but fortunately, he was not alone. He had the support of his childhood friend, Vane, and of the Grand Cipher's captain. They were his light and anchor, and with their help, Lancelot navigated the swirling tides of intrigue and arrived at the shores of truth. They were thus reunited, and together delivered Fiendrock from Isabella's clutches. I had fulfilled King Yosef's last wish, and Lancelot had come into his own. It was time for me to step down and place the country in the hands of the young. And so it was that I put the rolling hills and bright walls of my home behind me and embarked on a journey of discovery across the skies. But so did the young. They all went too. Episode 3, Military Intelligence. Zega Grande. Another new skydom where the clouds hid unfamiliar tales. My travels aboard the Grand Cipher have taken me to many far-flung places, where I have found that there is yet enchantment in this world. I've sought after magical seashells with the power to heal kingdoms. I've crossed blades with legendary warriors. And I've heard strains of alien music, which though strange to my ears, still spoke to my heart. But no matter how far I roam, my thoughts are constantly with the country King Yosef left in my keeping. When we alight in a foreign land, I find myself drawn not to gardens or taverns, but to places of law and order. I am ever seeking new allies for Fiendrock and rooting out her enemies. <sighs> it must seem like I have a mind of cold iron and steel, driven by thoughts of politics and war. And I have no excuse except to say, once a night, Always a night. Zega Grande had almost fallen under the sway of Avia. Now, as its people rebuilt, I desired to learn whether their fortresses were stronger and whether any dark shadows still haunted their streets. And I guess now's the time to find out about those shadows. A horde quest, Seed Hollow's armed forces. We get to play as Siegfried on his own, on his lonesome, but of course I have done so much transmarveling that I will have his stuff. I just got to figure out which one it is. <laughs> I haven't equipped everyone with their stuff, but yeah, I've got pretty much uh, most of, mostly everything. White Dragon's Glory, no. Hero's Creed, no. What are we looking at? Rose's Profusion. Oh no, what, what does your name come as? Dragon Slayer. Yes, I've, sort of, I've, I've got it. There it is. I scroll past it so much. So what does he have on his special 
Sigil. Grants a temporary boost of defense and secretly can't be interrupted by foe attacks after landing a perfect execution. And short of the Siegfried skill cooldowns whenever he lands a combo finisher or perfect execution. Lots of executions then, I hear. We never will really see the benefit of that. At least in these little missions. What you doing, Siegfried? Vern appeared at my shoulder one day as I was walking through Seed Hollow. I'm gathering intelligence. The dragon wrinkled his snout. Man, you're a workaholic. He wasn't incorrect. I did want to lay aside responsibility and stroll unburdened in the sun. But I couldn't rest easily when duty called. Hey, what if I help? Two weeks are better than none. Hmm. Vern was indeed light and fast, but I found it easier to scout alone. Ugh, come on! I know how to handle myself! You certainly do. If anything, I felt that the Captain, Lyria, and Vern were strong beyond their years. That they had been forced to grow up too fast. All right, Vern. Be my guest. Finally! Something to do! Agent Vern is on the job! Vern twirls deftly in the air. So, uh, what exactly is the job? What kind of intelligence you looking for? It's a little abstract. I would like to learn about the values of this country. Why it was founded, for example. Or what would cause its people to go to war. For nations with similar values are often quick allies. The nations with conflicting values find themselves enemies. Yeah, I'm totally following. Er, take Fiendrock, for example. Our king and people stand for fellowship and peace. If we were to find out that the leaders of Seed Hollow, on the other hand, favored conquest and power, then we might expect trouble. What uh, kind of trouble are we talking here? Don't worry. I gave Vern what I hoped was a reassuring smile. I am not here to conduct a coup. I only seek information to bring back to Fiendrock, which may help in matters of diplomacy. Diplomacy? Well, that's way above my pay grade. Aw, oh, dude, I think something just happened over by the gate. I see a bunch of soldiers running that way. With two flaps of his wings, Vern lifted himself higher into the air and hovered, squinting against the glare of the sun. Seed Hollow's military force. This may be worth looking into. Come. Right behind you. A group of onlookers had gathered by the gate, speaking in loud, excited voices. A monster hunt, huh? Let us follow them. We may learn something useful. Nothing is so revealing of a person's nature as their deeds in battle. We passed out of the stone city and trudged for a while among grass and dirt paths. Or rather, I did, while Vern rode the winds beside me. Suddenly, he let himself rise on an updraft. Spotted him! They're going at it! As he spoke, I became aware of distant cries and the clash of arms. Let's see here. I crept beneath the shadow of dappling leaves and up a small knoll for a better look. I don't think they can win this thing! The warriors of Seed Hollow were many, and their faces grim with determination. And yet... Captain, we can't hold out much longer! Stand your ground! If these monsters get past us, it's the lives of your friends and family! They were scattered, weak, and on the brink of disaster. Vern, I'm going to their aid. With that, I grasped the hilt of my sword and burst from the cover of the trees.
Controlling Siegfried. The blood of a dragon flows through the veins of this powerful knight. He swings his graceful with ease and cleaves enemies in twain. Press square repeatedly to perform a combo. Press triangle to perform a lunging attack that foes will have a hard time interrupting. His square attacks will hit even harder when chained together in a combo with perfect timing. Oh, so you've got timing like there. <laughs> oh, I like the style. Come and face me. you? You have to tell me where the timing is. You are not in a position What's my triangle attack? Focus on keeping okay. yourself safe. Uh, all right, fine. I have a defense buff. I mean, I'm not doing it very well, I gotta say. Hey, <laughs> that's that just a nice gap closer, though. Great. circles around the half beasts. Yeah, I can see that. Stop gawking and tend to the wounded. We're gonna make it. Heads up! Got monsters coming in from above! Now they were number one. In fact, the lunge is easy enough to take these guys out. And that's uh, quite a good upper range, I would say. The next wave is coming. Quickly, get to safety. Um, bad news. Goblin soldier marching this way. There's no way he can handle that alone. This is power. Who's still got juice in them? Back We're into the fray. No, stay put. Yeah, I very much like you. The support. Lunge. This is power. Your end is not. Super nice gap closer, easily goes in, nicely targetable. Huh. You are all safe now. I can't believe my eyes. Is that guy really human? We could have handled them alone. You know we could have. Think of how hard we've trained. I just love gap closers, I guess. The cry of the last monster faded to nothingness, and I sheathed my sword. Oh man, they're lucky we got here in the nick of time. Danger averted, Vern drifted to my side. <sighs> well met, Skyfarers. The soldiers from Seed Hollow gathered themselves and limped to form ranks. At their head, a man I believed was their captain stood frowning at us. <laughs> you guys must be dying to thank us. I take payment in apples, by the way. Vern wasn't quite reading the mood. So you know your way around a sword. Great. We appreciate the help and all, but could you not interfere with official military business? What? We are professional soldiers. We can handle monsters without you swinging in to save the day. Number one? That's a lie! Number two? What's with the attitude? That's enough, Fern. The dragon looked ready to spout fire. Hoping to calm him, I caught him and held him in my arms. I'm sorry. We mean no disrespect. With a bow, I turned and left that shadowy glade. I did not relax my grip on Vern because I felt certain that if I let go, he would flip back and spit venom in the soldiers' faces. So he's not the Dragon Slayer, he's the Dragon Hugger. Need something? Next on the board then. <laughs> Episode 5, Cool-Headed Siegfried. Vern flew beside me, seething. We are strangers to this land. And those soldiers have a reputation to uphold. Yeah, but doesn't it get you riled up when people are so rude? I laughed. <laughs> if rudeness were the worst foe we ever faced, we'd be lucky warriors indeed. In truth, 
I empathize with them. It is the duty of a soldier to fight. Incompetence on the battlefield is a matter of great shame. My unwanted assistance was salt in the wound. I guess I could see that, but still... Listen, no one was badly hurt. That is all that matters. I had trained many knights in my day. They had gone through their growing pains, and tasting defeat and humiliation. Yes, failure is bitter, but it is nourishment. And thus the knights learned and grew, each and every one of them, into powerful warriors. And it came to the finer points of warfare. The forces of Seed Hollow were clumsy at best, but their sense of duty was unparalleled. Upon hearing rumors of danger, they had acted swiftly, marching without fear to the monster's den. And though they had been forced to the very cusp of annihilation, not a soldier had wavered or fled. Now, they too had drunk deeply of the medicine of defeat. I believe it would course through them like fire and bring them newfound strength. The forces of Seed Hollow were capable of much, much more. Episode 6, Siegfried's Confiction. Siegfried is a fan favorite? Well, can't be that much of a fan favorite as a certain someone we still haven't got added to our crew yet, as I understand it, at least in this game. I entered the warm wooden interior of my cabin on the Grand Cipher, carrying an armful of books. I lay them on the desk drew out a chair, and took a short trip through Seed Hollow's history. Unbroken peace. For 500 years after the ending of the war, violence had not troubled the skies of Zeca Grande. There were your usual skirmishes, of course, power-hungry rebels, etc. But nothing so big it had not been quickly sorted out and buried in the sands of time. However, 15 years ago, tragedy on Dolly Island acted as a catalyst to the rise of Avia. Hitherto, peaceful primals went on rampage, and hordes of monsters were drawn to the carnage. So that's why. I thought back to the disordered ranks of the forces of Seed Hollow. Peace had dulled their senses. They had forgotten how to handle swords and spears, forgotten how to manage monsters, each one vastly different in shape and movement. They need guidance. The people of Seed Hollow seem to be gardeners, fond of orchards and good rich earth. They had no love of war, nor possessed the means for a great campaign. Unless a revolution were to completely reshape this country, I did not believe it would ever pose a threat to Fiendrock. Its forces existed not to invade, but solely to defend. But now, they had not even the power to do that. Seed Hollow soldiers were steadfast and honorable. I had seen that. But they no longer knew how to protect their land. I had come to admire the delicate flowers and many bowed trees that flourished in this clime, and did not wish to see them trampled under a monster's claw or an invader's boot. I could offer Seed Hollow's forces counsel, but I would have to tread carefully. After all, I was a foreigner and a former captain of knights. One misstep, and I could forever sour the relations between Seed Hollow and Fiendrock. I will have to be discreet. I threw on my traveling cloak and arranged my pouch. Hearing no footfalls outside my room, I slipped through the door and padded softly down the corridor. Oh, hey, Siegfried. You heading out? Vern spotted me on the deck of the Grand Cipher, so much for stealing off unnoticed. I'm going for a walk. 
On your tiptoes? No way, man. I bet you're going on another one of your secret missions. Though small, Vern had inherited the legendary wisdom of the dragons. <sighs> Guilty as charged. But the fewer people who know about it, the better. Can you keep this from the others? Aw, uh, come on, Siegfried. We all know you won't yap for truth and honor and justice and all that. If you're gonna disappear, you should at least tell your captain. My butt will understand. I could find no objection. It seemed that all the adventures Vern had been on, all the grand and wondrous things he'd seen, had sharpened his insight. Yes, of course. You're right. I followed Vern to the captain's cabin. I have come to ask for permission to leave on a private mission. But I must warn you, if things go wrong, it could spell trouble for the crew. My throat was tight, light nerves, I supposed, and a touch of guilt. But the captain did no more than smile and wish me a safe journey. What'd you expect? We trust you. Fortune truly had graced me with the best of companions. That's usually why they call me the Olisandri after all a title but well, with that said as well it seems like uh percival ended up training one place's troops and now we train another with siegfried episode seven pulling strings i strode through the gates of seed hollow so what you gonna do here with a dragon on my tail I would like to ask you the same question. Why did you follow me? Curiosity. What's a cool knight like you always doing when he leaves the Grand Cipher? Oh, curiosity killed the lizard. But no matter. Vern and the captain had offered me their complete trust. So I could do the same in return. Besides, if anything were to happen, I'd be there to protect him. You're welcome to stay, but I am only visiting Seed Hollow's forces again to offer help, if I may. Nothing of interest. Sounds like something my bud would do, but I thought you were going to leave them alone to help them save face or whatever. I was, but I realized that, in the end, the safety of the people is too heavy a price to pay for pride. That's fair. No offense, though, Siegfried. Your way with words is a little, um, special, so I'll just come along and do the talking. Twenty minutes later, Vern and I were in the heart of Seed Hollow, watching its soldiers scurry about like mice. Five hundred years of peace has truly taken its toll. Seed Hollow's forces had become only an army in name. In truth, the military affairs of the country were run by Zothma, a civilian and information broker. Everyone took orders from him. Dispatch from Zothba. We got a lost child on our hands. Everyone, split up and search for the mother. Yes, sir! Man, you ever just get lost and have a whole army look for your mom? Vern hovered by the branches of a tall oak, surveying the commotion with shining eyes. It is important to serve your people in times of concord as in times of strife. But I fear they have lost sight of their true duty. There is a saying, it is better to be a warrior in a garden than a gardener in a war. Peace should never so lull a nation that its defenses are abandoned and its soldiers turned into clerks and errand boys. Captain, new orders just came in. We're being sent to clear a horde of goblins camped right outside the city. Now these errand boys faced hordes of monsters who had been roused by Avia's machinations. Five hundred years of stillness, nature, and peace. Gone. All at the whim of a madwoman. You hear that, troops? Prepare for battle! Drive those goblins away from our homes! Yes, sir! They sure got bark. Problem is, they ain't got bite. Are you worried about them? 
Aren't you? You saw them get their butts kicked into the next item just a few days ago. I did, but failure is the mother of success. I readjusted my gauntlet and shifted my sword on my back. This is a chance for them to grow. I'll make sure of it. And how will he do that? A little help from the shadows. Siegfried on his lonesome again. Vern and I left Seed Hollow and turned off the road, beating a straight path to the goblins' encampment through trees and underbrush. We arrived before the soldiers. In front of us, half hidden in the darkness of a cave, slinked the forms of dozens of goblins. Alone, goblins are not much of a threat. But when they're allowed to form hordes, I... Oh, I know all about those smart little suckers. They can plot stuff and coordinate and everything. I smiled. Vern was as much of a veteran as I was. So, earlier, you sounded like you were going to help these soldiers out. What exactly have you got planned? As you know, all monsters are different and must be dealt with in different ways. We shall teach these tactics to the soldiers, but from the shadows. Plan rehearsed, Vern and I crept from the shade of the trees and into the mouth of the cave. Good. Let's move. We've got to break their formations. First, let's go for a frontal assault on the sentries. The army from Seed Hollow will be here any minute now. Hurry! <laughs> Don't worry. We won't oh, you got multiple strikes? We can't just leave. We gotta get rid of the Wow, enemy. I've got time to beat everyone? Look, we made it. Looks like the soldiers are still prepping for the fight. Perfect. That gives us just enough time to thin down their main ranks. A more gobble. Man, there's a lot of them. Well, let's fix that, shall we? Okay, I'm getting hit a bit much. This is power. Push through. Okay, that's as far as the gap closer can go, is it? I haven't quite got the timing of these yet. I can't believe they had so large a force. It's a good thing we came. <laughs> Go further! I say, there must be someone else somewhere. Reinforcements! You got this, Siegfried. Hey, bud. I don't think there's any butt left to kick around here. A few butts. This is power. Meet your doom. I was hitting the timing that time. Yeah, getting a bit more of the timing. A little bit more timing. Nice work. I think the soldiers can pick off what's left. I think there are a few more goblins hidden, but likely not enough to reverse the tide. We had still better conduct a search, just to be safe. Let's go in deeper. Look, it's a goblin soldier. And what are those? It's little sidekicks? I don't think Seed Hollow's forces will be able to handle this. We should at least bring down the goblin soldier. So leave all the small fry alone? Got it. Don't want to rob Seed Hollow's finest of a job. Right yeah, but the smallest ones are the ones that are the most annoying to start off with. <laughs> Just the goblin soldier, remember? Oh, what? You really can't take them out? <laughs> <laughs> I didn't think that would be a thing. I was like, I'll get rid of the rage ones. <gasps> you start from the very start! Ready? Our mission awaits. What the crap? We've got to break their formations. First, let's go for a frontal assault on the sentries. I wonder they had a bit more health. <laughs> I didn't listen to the instructions, though, no, but... Won't even need a minute. I was thinking it would be... Uh... 
not that serious by in the mail. It would just be like cutscene stuff. Perfect. That gives us just enough time to thin down their main ranks. I don't think they fail from oh, doing it. Man, there's a lot of them. Well, let's fix that, shall we? Over there now. This is power. I can't believe they had so large a force. It's a good thing we can. Your edge is not. Prove your strength. Reinforcement! You got this, Siegfried! Meet your doom! Push through! Enough! Feel yourself! I really have that timing now, though. I think there are a few more goblins hidden, but likely not enough to reverse the tide. We had still better conduct a search, just to be safe. Let's go in deeper. Okay, I understand the mission now, but the issue is going to be not the killing them. Soldier. And what are those? It's little sidekicks? I don't think Seed Hollow's forces will be able to handle this. We Where's should at least bring down the goblin soldier. So leave all the small fry alone? Got it. I just stand really far back and just watch the range stuff coming in for me, yeah? Did it right this time. Well, I think we're done here. The army from Seed Hollow should be capable of handling the rest. All right, let's head deeper in. Stay together and stay focused. Oh snap! Seems like they caught up. Let's hide. I'm hiding. Get. <laughs> Holy Bahamut! We did it! The day is ours! Good work, troops! Vern and I crouched behind a craggy boulder and watched as the soldiers strode about the battlefield. Not a goblin was left. The voices of the triumphant rose up and resonated about the high, cool walls of the cavern. All went well. I guess, but those soldiers took a heck of a beating. Vern perched himself on top of the boulder, head cocked to one side. They will continue to grow. They have experience now, and what's more, confidence. They will learn to keep their wits about them in battle, to observe the enemy, and strategize. If you're sure, there's uh, something I've been wondering about, though, Siegfried. You didn't have to help these people. You're not even getting paid for this. So why go through the trouble? I laughed softly. I think you already know the answer to that riddle. Because everything good in this world is worth protecting. Well, I obviously can't follow instructions, can I? Need something? Oh, loads of enemies, I'll kill them all! <laughs> Episode 9, Future Ally. Three days after the victory in the caves, Vern rushed into my cabin. Dude, he's here! The captain of Seed Hollow's army is here! Here? On the Grand Cipher? My eyebrows drew themselves together. I was quite certain we hadn't been seen. Do you think he figured us out? No, no, that shouldn't be possible. I had lived and worked in the shadows for many years. I knew how to remain invisible. Let us meet him in any case. It would be discourteous to turn him away. Agreed. We're lots of things, but Rude ain't one of them. Vern led me to a spacious room on the Grand Cipher, where our guest sat perched on the edge of a comfortable chair, his hands upon his knees. He stood up quickly when we entered. 
It's, uh, been a while. He wouldn't quite meet my eyes. As the young man swallowed rather loudly, I recalled his last words to me. We can handle monsters without you swinging in to save the day. It has. I still regret my actions in the forest. Is that what you've come to talk about? No. He shook his head vigorously. I'm here to thank you. You saved my life and the lives of my comrades. So, our presence had been noticed. I swept my cloak back in a deep bow. I apologize for interfering yet again. Oh, oh, no, please stop with the apologies. You're just making me feel worse. Listen. He explained. Three days ago, Seed Hollow's army had been called upon to drive back a horde of goblins. He had marched his company there with a heavy heart, expecting great losses. But to his surprise, when they emerged from the goblin den, they were not missing even a single soldier. Goblins are intelligent. They post sentinels and form ranks just like we do. Sword fighters and shield bearers in front, mages in back. Any battle with them should have been tough and bloody. Yet these goblins had no set sentries, and their forces were meager and scattered. Even the large beasts the goblins kept in reserve had been terribly weakened by the time Seed Hollow's forces reached it. But what could have worn it out like that? A night of partying too hard? No. Someone had to have helped us, and luckily, I had an inkling who. Now he raised his round, earnest face and looked straight at me. There was this knight who'd saved my troops before. He wore jet black armor and carried a crimson sword. Yeah, no way you'd forget that get up after seeing it once. Vern peered down at my armor. It was matte black, so I could slip by in the night unseen. But I suppose outlined against the light of the sun, it cut quite a distinctive figure. The rest really wasn't that difficult. Went with that description to a merchant who deals with a lot of foreign traffic and learned about a former night captain. I see. Years away from the battlefield had dulled the army's swords. This I already knew. But now I realize it had allowed them to build rapport with their people, winning them trusted eyes and ears throughout their country. If anyone should be apologizing, it's me. Before I could stop him, he went down on one knee. That day in the forest, I was frustrated and ashamed by the weakness of my troops. So I took it out on you. I'm sorry. You saved my soldiers not only once, but twice. And the second time around, you even made sure we learned from the experience. I really don't know how to make it up to you. Vern and I looked at each other, surprised by the sincerity in his voice. Your kind words are more than enough, and your forgiveness. The young man opened his mouth, but I shook my head. Whatever the circumstances, I still trampled your pride underfoot. <laughs> What's pride when compared to life? To speak the truth, I thought Seed Hollow's forces poorly trained and disorganized, from an outsider's perspective at least. By placing a hand beneath the man's elbow, I silently bid him rise. But I see now that you have strength and wisdom that was hidden to me. With you in command, I have no doubt your company will go on to accomplish great things. That means a lot, coming from you. He smiled, the tension melting from his frame. But the fact remains that I let my soldiers get out of practice. You've helped me realize a lot these past few days, and I promise we'll train harder than ever, make up for lost time, and become the defenders this country deserves. Good. Never stop believing in yourselves. Seed Hollow, a land of gardeners who derive joy from the bounty of flora and the simplicity of peace. Though they were no longer the mightiest of warriors, they were by no means weak. 
no more than the wildflower, who holds aloft its petals in dry soil and through battering storms. And like wildflowers, they would continue to grow and flourish. Though Seed Hollow is a small country now, perhaps in time, it will rise to become a mighty nation. When that day comes, it surely will make a valuable ally for Fiendrock. Maybe. That gives us our epilogue. My work is done here. To end another fate episode. Hey, is it just me, or have we been getting less monster hunting missions recently? We, as all Skyfarers, were used to shouldering the quests of greatest peril, as we've seen more combat than most standing armies. However, though Zega Grande was as plagued by monsters as ever, we'd had a quiet few days. I think I can explain. Lyria raised her hand, eager to impart valuable intelligence. Apparently, Seed Hollow's soldiers have been super on top of things lately. A monster appears, and before the Crew Alliance can even draft up a mission, they get in there and solve the problem. Good for them, but less work for us means less jingle in our pockets. Vern drifted to me from across the room, and positioning his snout by my ear, spoke in a whisper. Yes, they really got their act together, huh? It would certainly seem so. I looked up at my small comrade in training. We exchanged a secret smile. Well done, troops. Well done. Less hands on, but got the job done. Seed Hollow evaluation. Have a good day. One of our few remaining archive entries. I found the opportunity to conduct reconnaissance within Seed Hollow, the largest city state in Zegagrande's Skydom and its military. I am ready to report my findings. Seed Hollow's principal industries are agriculture, specifically horticulture and mining. The nation has enjoyed a long period of peace, unless its military strength is still emerging. Nevertheless, each soldier is ready to give their life in defense of their homeland. The cheerful disposition of the citizens reflects their trust in their protectors. I, Siegfried, attest with conviction the Seed Hollow poses no threat to Fiendrock. It is my personal recommendation that we establish diplomatic relations at once to exchange resources and personnel for the benefit of both nations. Another one complete. Well, two more to go, but before that, we turn to the questing. <laughs>